Hello there guys, how's it going? This is Mike coming back at you with a continuation of our previous video. In the previous video, we introduced these things called matrices, what the heck these things are, what we can do with them, and what we have to do with them to do what we want to do with them. Uh, in this video, we are going to uh, get some actual practice with working with these uh, matrices now and working with those elementary row operations uh, and solving some systems of linear equations. So first up, a uh, nice simple problem, problem to start off with here, a uh, system of two linear equations and two variables. Uh, we're going to solve the system using Gaussian elimination. So first thing we always do is we always set up the augmented matrix. Uh, so we are going to have two, four, negative four, and then negative one, negative two, eight. Again, we're just taking the coefficients and putting them in the corresponding spot of our matrix. So now that we have the augmented matrix, we now need to get this thing into a reduced echelon form. Uh, so keep in mind that is where uh, any rows that would be all zeros are the last rows in our matrix. Every uh, every uh, row that is not all zeros, the first non-zero entry is a one. The ones are so that uh, the leading one in a row is to the right of the leading one in the row that is um, immediately above it. And then any columns that contain a leading one, the other entries in that column are all zeros. So, I need to eventually get this so that I have a one here and then I have a zero here. I want one here and zero here. Um, so as a quick recap, we can switch rows. We can multiply a row by a constant, a non-zero constant, um, or we can add a non-zero constant uh, multiple of a row to some other row. Well, I'm just going to start off uh, by dividing the entire first row by two or multiplying by one half. We don't necessarily just have to multiply by whole numbers. We can multiply by fractions too. And when we do an elementary row operation, we also specify what we're doing. Uh, we write, you know, one half times row one uh, or we say we switch row one and row two uh, or something like that. So that's going to become a one, a two, a negative two, and then the second row remains the same because we didn't change it. So now I have one, two, negative two, negative one, negative two, and eight. Uh, so um, we have a one here. I need a zero here. Uh, so how I can do that uh, is I can add row two onto row one. And that is going to uh, nicely give me uh, this being a zero. So we say row one plus row two, and then we also have to specify uh, what, um, what row we're having this replace. Uh, so this is gonna become my new row two. And then we get one, two, negative two. And then we also uh, have, uh, now it's, this is where our row changes. Uh, this is negative one plus the one, which gives me zero. Uh, we also have negative two plus two gives me zero, uh, and then eight plus negative two is equal to six. Okay, well, keep in mind this is an augmented matrix. 
Uh, and keep in mind that, as we said in the previous video, sometimes to show that it's an augmented uh, matrix, we, show, uh, we draw that vertical line there uh, to show that this rightmost column here, uh, this is the, uh, this is the column of numbers that our quantities with X's and Y's um, are equal to. So if I translate this back into a system, the first row tells me that X plus two Y is equal to negative two. And the second row is saying zero X plus zero Y is equal to a positive six. Something's not looking quite right here. Uh, something doesn't quite make sense. Namely, that second equation uh, right there. Is it possible for zero times anything plus zero times anything else to equal six? Nah, -uh. this is, an, this is a, an example of a contradictory or an inconsistent uh, system of linear uh, equations. Uh, so this is something I did want to purposely uh, show you. Uh, if you have <coughs> a system of two linear equations in two variables or three linear equations uh, in three uh, variables where one of your rows has all the entries except the last one being zeros, uh, then you know that there's something not quite right and you have uh, an inconsistent or a contradictory uh, system of uh, linear equations. But let's actually do this with something that would actually give us something that we could work with. Uh, so I'm gonna take this same system, I'm just gonna make one little tweak to it. Um, I'm going to make the system now 2x plus 4y is equal to negative 4 and have it be minus x minus y is equal to uh, a positive eight. Here, this is our new system uh, that we can now uh, actually do something with. So the first couple steps are gonna be the same thing as what we did already in the problem above. Two, four, negative four, negative one, negative one, eight. I'm gonna take the first row and chop it in half. Uh, one, four, negative four, negative one, negative one, uh, sorry, one, two, and negative two. And then negative one, negative one, and eight. And now I'm going to do uh, that same thing. I am going to uh, take row one and add row two, and this is going to become my new uh, row two. So now let's see what this is going to uh, give us. And we'll find that this is going to lead to something that we can actually continue on with. Uh, so row one is remaining the same. Negative one plus the one is the zero. Uh, two plus the negative one is the one and then negative two plus the eight gives me the six. So this is uh, my matrix so far. Note that we have the leading one here and the other entry in our column is a zero. So that's good. Uh, looking at our second row, we have a zero and then we have a one. So we do have a leading one in our second row, that's good but this is still not in row reduced echelon form because the other entry in this column here with this leading one is not a zero. I need to get this thing to become a zero uh, so that uh, my matrix will then be closer, if not in row reduced echelon form. So how can I get this thing uh, to become a uh, zero. Well, if I take row one and I subtract two times row two from it, then I know that two minus 
two times one will give me zero, and that will clear this guy out. And as long as I make that my new row one, then we're good. So again, this is row one. So row two is going to remain exactly the same as it was. Zero, one, and six. All right, row one, our new row one is one minus two times zero, or one. Two minus two times one is two minus two, or zero. And then negative two minus two times six is gonna be negative two minus 12, or a negative 14. And just once again, uh, I'll just draw that vertical line there to show that this is the augmented matrix. Uh, these are the numbers on the right-hand side uh, of our equal sign. If I take this and write this out now as a system uh, of linear equations, I get x plus zero y, or just x, equals negative 14. And if I have zero x plus one y, or y, is equal to six. So I have my two solutions. I have x equals negative 14, and y is equal uh, to positive six. So there we go, guys. Uh, this example, not too bad, uh, fairly friendly. Uh, working with a system of two linear equations and two variables, uh, not that bad. Uh, the next one we're going to work on, we're not actually going to fully finish it. Uh, this is more just so that you can get some more practice with how these row operations are done uh, and also just sort of show you what it would be like uh, solving a system of three linear, linear equations in three variables. It's not as fun. Spoilers. Uh, so we're going to solve this system now. 2x plus y plus z equals 1. x minus y plus 2z equals 4. And then 3x plus 3y plus z is equal to negative 2. Again, how we start these things off, we write the augmented matrix. Two, one, 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 negative one, two, four, three, three, one, negative two, and there we go. Okay, once again, now we're getting this into row reduced echelon form. I want my matrix, and it, it's sort of the first checkpoint, if you will, uh, I want my first column to look like one, zero, zero. Uh, and whatever uh, basic uh, or elementary row operations I have to do to get that to be the case, that's what I have to do. I'm going to start off, um, I know that I can get a one up here if I switch rows one and two. So that's what I'm going to do. R1 and R2 get switched. So this gives me one, negative one, two, four, two, one, 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 and three, three, one, negative two. So there we go. Um, now I need these numbers to be zeros. And you can probably guess what we have to do for each of these cases is we have to take uh, a non-zero multiple of a row, namely row one, and add it to uh, the other row. Um, and now sometimes 
And at least for the start, I would suggest that you do it this way so that you don't get confused. Once you get more practice with doing these operations, uh, you can sort of do uh, two of these guys all in one step. Uh, but for now, let's just do one of these at a time. So I'm going to make the zero happen here. And for that, I'm going to do row two uh, minus two times row one, because that's how I'll get this to be a zero. Doing a, a, a little bit of forethinking and a little bit of um, mental math to see where I have to go. This becomes my new row two. And fitting this in here, uh, row one remains the same. Row three remains the same. We didn't change that yet. Now row two is going to change. Uh, two minus two times uh, the uh, one is a zero. One minus two times the negative one is going to be a three. Uh, one minus two times the two is gonna be one minus four or negative three and one minus two times the four is one minus eight or negative seven. So that's where we are uh, thus far here. Now I need to get this entry to be a zero so that our matrix can be in a row reduced echelon form. So I know that if I do three plus negative three times one, that's going to make this guy zero. So that's what I'm going to do uh, for this next row operation. I'm going to do row three minus three times row one, and this is going to become my new row three. So, um, Again, row three is the only thing that's being changed here. The other two rows are staying the same. So one, zero, negative one, three, two, four, negative three, negative seven. Just copy down the first two rows as they were. <clears throat> and now the third row changes. Uh, three times, uh, uh, three minus three times one gives me zero. Uh, three minus three times negative one is gonna be three plus three, or six. Uh, one minus three times two is gonna be one minus six, or negative five. Uh, and then negative two minus two times four is going to be a negative 10. So there we go. We have one of our columns as we want. Now we are going to uh, start to do the same thing with our second column. In the second column, we want our leading one here, and then we want these two entries uh, to both be zeros. So to make this thing a one, I'm going to divide this row by three, which is the same thing as multiplying it by one third. One third row two, row one remains the same. Zero, one, negative one, negative seven thirds, and then zero, six, negative five, negative 10. Okay. Uh, I need this to be a zero, and the way I can get this to be a zero is if I take row one and add it to row two and have that sum become my new row one. So R1 plus R2, and that's becoming my new row one. So uh, rows two and three, remaining the same. Mm -hmm. 
Now, row one. One plus zero is one. Negative one plus one is zero. Two plus negative one is one. And uh, four plus a negative seven thirds. Uh, well, four in terms of thirds is 12 thirds. There we go. Uh, four in terms of thirds uh, is uh, 12 thirds. 12 thirds plus a negative 7 thirds is a positive 5 thirds. And I need to uh, get this thing to be a zero. The way I can do that is by taking row three and subtracting six times row two and have this become my new uh, row three. Uh, so we're gonna have some fairly ugly looking numbers here. We're only changing row three, so rows one and two remain the same. All right, uh, zero minus six times zero is zero. Six minus six times one gives me zero. Uh, negative five minus six times a negative one is a negative five plus six or a positive one. Uh, and then uh, we have negative 10 minus six times uh, a negative seven thirds. Well, negative six times negative seven thirds is a positive 42 thirds. Negative 10 in terms of thirds uh, is negative 30 thirds. So I have 42 thirds minus 30 thirds uh, or a positive 12 thirds or four. So we now have our second column uh, in the form uh, that we uh, want this uh, to be in. We have zero, our leading one, and then our zero here. Also note that in our third row, we have our leading one uh, here where we want it to be. Uh, it is directly to the right uh, of the leading one in the row that is um, immediately above it. So what I'm going to let you do now on your own uh, is pause this video, uh, try to uh, do the correct row operations so that these entries here are both uh, zeros. So use those elementary row operations that we uh, talked um, about in the last video and what we've been using so often in this video uh, and see if you can make both these guys be zero uh, and then see what these numbers will turn into. Uh, note that if you do this right, these numbers here should not be affected. You should still have ones there and there. And these two columns should not be changed whatsoever. So press pause. Once you think you have it, press play, and we'll see if you were correct. All right, so let's see if you guys came up with the uh, correct uh, final uh, row reduced echelon form matrix. Uh, what you had to do was you had to uh, subtract uh, row three from row one and have that become your new row one. And then you had to add rows two and three and have that become uh, your new row two. And when you do that, you come up with uh, the following matrix here. Uh, obviously one zero zero and then negative seven thirds, zero one zero and a positive five thirds and then zero zero one uh, and then a positive four. So now we can translate this back into a system of uh, linear equations, which at this point is just our actual solution. Uh, X is equal to negative seven thirds, Y is equal to five thirds, and Z is equal to four. So there we go, guys. Uh, we have our uh, solution 
uh, to uh, this particular um, system of three linear equations in three variables. Now, this is uh, very tedious. It's very time consuming. If I say, uh, or if you have a problem where I want you to solve a system using this method by hand, if I specify you have to uh, do it by hand, then obviously uh, you have to uh, do it by hand. If I don't specify, there is a way that you can uh, get an augmented matrix to be in a row reduced echelon form uh, in your calculator. I'm going to show you how you uh, do that now. So here's our uh, graphing calculator. If you go to second and then the uh, exponent of negative one here, uh, you will see uh, that there is, uh, in blue, there's a matrix button. So you're gonna hit second and then that button. Second and then that button, there we go. And now uh, you see that uh, there are names of things here. There's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then there's numbers next to it. Here there's a three and then a times and then a four uh, next to it. This is the portion of the calculator where we go to do things with matrices. So first thing you're going to do, uh, if you can use your calculator to solve a system of linear equations, you're going to go over to the edit uh, and you're going to hit the uh, first matrix or really whatever matrix you want to choose. Um, but we're going to uh, make some changes to it. We're going to set up the matrix inside of our calculator. First thing you have to do is you have to enter the number of rows and the number of columns in your augmented matrix. Uh, again, it's always number of rows followed by number of columns. Uh, so let's uh, pretend we were solving another system of three uh, linear equations in three variables. So we would have just like we see here, we have one, two, three rows and one, two, three, four columns. So first number is number of rows. You hit enter. Second number is number of columns. You hit enter. The calculator will now change so that there are that many rows and that many columns. Now you plug in uh, all of uh, the entries in our matrix uh, that we would have from our augmented uh, matrix that we were given with our system of linear equations. So let's just make up some numbers here. Um, actually, let's not. Let's stick with the, the same uh, numbers that we had here in our uh, given problem, uh, and we'll see uh, that um, we can come down to uh, actually another valid answer, but not the same one uh, as what we calculated. So if I take this matrix that's at the left of my calculator and I type it in here. So I'm going two, one, one, one. That takes me through that first row. I'm now down to that second row. I have one, negative one, two, and four. You can probably guess I already typed these in. Uh, three, three, one, and then a negative two. So now we have all of the entries uh, saved in our uh, calculator here. We have all of our matrix entries in here. Uh, by the way, uh, the way you go from one entry to the next is once you have it typed in, you just hit the, um, the um, enter key and that takes you right on to the next one. So now you're gonna clear out of this. We're gonna go back into that matrix operation area. So again, we're doing second and then that exponent of negative one there. Now we're gonna go over to the math screen. That's the second one here. And we're going to go down until we hit RREF. It's choice B here. 
you're going to hit enter on that. Now you have the um, open parenthesis there. We're going to go back into that math or the, that matrix thing. So second and then negative one exponent. Now we're going to stick with the names and we're just going to hit enter on our matrix A. That's going to load that matrix that we have already defined in our calculators into the uh, calculator and we close up the parentheses. And now what we're going to be essentially telling our calculator is, hey, do all of this math for us. Row reduce this thing uh, down to something that looks like this here at the bottom. So let's see what happens. Uh, let's see what we get uh, when we hit enter. So this thing does spit out a matrix. And if I compare this uh, to what is uh, at the left here, we got, so we see 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. That's good. But where the calculator differs a bit is in the uh, fourth and uh, the final column. Um, we got negative seven thirds, positive five thirds, and four. The calculator got 1.66667, which is positive five thirds. Uh, then it got negative 2.3333333, or negative seven uh, thirds. And then it got zero for Z. Uh, and this actually is a valid answer. Uh, you can take these values of X, Y, and Z and plug these things into our given equation here. And you do indeed come up with another uh, valid um, answer. So there is more than one uh, valid solution uh, to this system of uh, linear equations. Uh, so that is uh, quite neat. Um, it is uh, neat that you can come up with, uh, with two seemingly uh, completely different uh, answers to a system of three linear equations uh, in three variables. But nonetheless, it is possible. But I just wanted to show you how you do this kind of thing in your calculator so that, say, for homework assignments or for a quiz or something, uh, if you just have to solve a system of linear equations, uh, if you just want to take the numbers, uh, throw them into a matrix in your calculator and have the calculator do the row reduced echelon form for you, uh, then that is fine. But again, if I specify on a test that you have to do it by hand, then you have to do it by hand. The calculator is a nice little check to make sure that you have come to a correct answer, uh, but ultimately it's all based on uh, the, the wording of the question itself. So guys, this concludes our video uh, on solving systems of linear equations with matrices. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please be sure to reach out to me, emails, texts, postcards, paper airplanes, whatever, get it to me, I'll answer, I'll get back to you. Till next time, take it easy.